Hello and welcome to a quick and dirty guide on how to get all of the sightseeing log entries in Dawn Trail 7.0. There are 45 in total, so let's just go straight into it. We're going to start off in the first city, Tulialal, and the first one on the list, number one entry, is here at the Bayside Bevy Marketplace. If you go here, you'll find that there's this place where you pick up all of your roll quests, just outside of here, in fact, you'll see it at ground level, just up these steps. There's the market board area. There's the walkway with the statues. Yeah, there's the leave mate and armorer. So we just simply go up here, and this is just a lookout emote. And there we go. For your second entry, you need to come over to the Resplendent Quarter. And we're going to head west from this mini etherite. You'll go through these gardens and then you will actually see just ahead next to this flower section and this raised platform with a view area. We've got ourselves a viewpoint of down below and that's a lookout. Uh, just like before. And there's number two. For entry number three, we need to go back down to the Bayside Bevy and where the market board is, and you'll see a long pier in an L shape just south of where the market board is. And in fact, the closer you get, you will actually start to see the actual sightseeing log appear at the end of this pier uh, near these rock shoals, which is pretty cool. So that's number three. And again, this is another lookout emote, which gives us a beautiful view of the sky sort of view downwards of the harbour there of the high tide harbour for entry number four we're over here at the forward cabins and there's the actual forward cabins mini ether as well in the southwestern side and you'll see that right at the end of this will be your actual um sightseeing log entry so let's go straight over there So right at the end here, just behind the flower bed, is our view of the actual cabins, which is ridiculous how far that actually stretches out. And there's number four, which is the forward cabins. So vista number five, as you might imagine, is locked behind this area. It's actually on the top of this building. And the way you get on top of this building is actually via a jumping puzzle. So we need to actually go over to start a jumping puzzle. In fact, you can see the steps um, just about approaching. There's the bushes, and then around here, you'll see that there is this sticky out bit of uh, concrete, and essentially this is where it begins and it stretches all the way up. So let's do this together. And there we go. We're finally at the top. So there are many ways of actually getting up here. There's uh, obviously lots of different pegs. It's kind of choose whichever you feel most confident with. And the only dangerous bit is probably this section here where it's sticking out either side and you could go all the way down. But it's not a bad view from up here. Of course, it's not as big as that jumping puzzle, but you will actually have to do this jumping puzzle if you want this lookout. Or, of course, use a Ceremony of Eternal Bond and use a ring on someone who uh, actually enjoys doing the jumping puzzles. Okay, for the second zone, we're obviously in Urko Parcha, and we're going to start over here in the north at Wakun Pelo, and we're going to go over to 2912.6. That's over here on this ridge, and obviously if you have the ability to fly, it's going to make things a little bit quicker, uh, but of course you could just walk up and jump up here, and you can see the main ether right from the actual place in fact you can see the lookout from it it is literally just here on this ridge here for entry number seven then you'll see me over here at uh, Miplu's mate garden and it's just a little bit northeast of here on a ridge uh, this is what Miplu's looks like we've got alpacas and if you just turn around and you go up this track here to the north you will find on this ridge the entry uh, number seven and again it's just another lookout emote 
like before. So nice and simple, at least this one's on the ground, nice and easy to find. For number eight then, we're over here in Shades of Grief. You can either teleport to the southern um, Warlord's Echo or just come down the mountainside on a mount uh, from Wakan Palo and you'll find Shades of Grief. There's this small uh, turret, basically this small rampart uh, on the bottom side of it uh, to the south and it's literally just something you can jump up to but of course it is easier if you can just fly up here and this will be the uh, the eighth entry, Shades of Grief, which is a really interesting place. I advise you read some of these uh, entries. The, the story is quite fun. All right, for number nine, we've gone a little bit southeast of Shades of Grief to this section, which is called Nayor Gorna. Uh, and you'll see that there's a section just to the north of where it says the name of the place next to a bunch of these fire friends in amongst the uh, the craters. Overlooking this section of lava is the entry. So there's number nine. So that's all to do with Valagor and Manda and the fiery breath. Okay, for entry 10, as you can see here, we teleported over to Warlord's Echo and then just went on our flying mount far to the west. And you'll find at this place, which is called Cherwagur Saltern, uh, next to Cherwagur Lake, there's actually a big building here the biggest building with these sort of lines on it. Uh, that is where you will find your sightseeing log. Of course, you will need a, um, a flying mount to be able to get up here. But uh, yeah, also you will probably have to stay on your mount um, to actually land on that as well. But it's once again another lookout emote and we've got ourselves number 10. For number 11 and our last in this entire zone, you need to go to, over to the Indelible Passage and just out from there is a building called Sentinel. As you can see, there's the cave you come out of. Here's the garden area. And just over here on top of this building overlooking the lake is the sightseeing log and the last one for this zone. And it's another lookout emote for Warcor Lador. For our third zone then, we're over here in Kozam Uka. And if you go to Okhanu and you travel westerly towards the House of Winds High, you will find at the top of House of uh, Winds High, the actual sightseeing log. It's right next to the NPC uh, Gunohanu. You might have already got this one through the storyline, but in case you haven't, that's where uh, number 12 is located, right at the top of the uh, passage inside House of Winds High. It should be noted that the next entry is over here at Cave Kikitola. You actually have to enter the cave. There is entrances uh, pretty much everywhere. And then once you're inside the cave, if you keep going uh, towards the eastern section, there's another entrance right there. It's actually located behind a rock. So if we open the map here, it is right here, just near where it says Zopic but you're underground here, obviously. And it's another lookout emote for entry number 13, talking about all of the bioluminescence in this cave system, which is really cool. For entry number 14, we're over here at Breath Between, which is obviously just a little bit further east of where we were for the previous entry. And just on this bridge area here, you will find on the right side of it, um, there's a little bit of an embankment Past the bridge is this one here. That's number 14. Again, it's another lookout emote. Talking about the river splitting off, basically, from the mountain water and the fishermen as well. Okay, for entry number 15, we're at the northeastern section of Kozamauka at a place called Kozanu Uiki. I don't know how else you pronounce that. Kozanu Uiki? I don't know. It's on the second floor up here. It's next to this guy called Lanahali. And it's overlooking the area below, uh, just like that. So if you find that gate, you'll be able to find this right in the center of this structure on the second floor. Um, but yeah, pretty much this talks about the wooden statues and talk, yeah, it's all about the heritage. It's quite fascinating. Number 16 then, we're over here at Urfenshire, which is the second teleport location in uh, Kozama Uka. You'll find on this building to the southwest of the Aetherite, just here, which also happens to be the one with some of the moblins inside. Right around here, there's actually a little balcony 
uh, that actually has the sightseeing log. So, of course, you will need to have your flying mount to get up there. And it's talking about of the architecture of that village. Next up, we have entry number 17, the last of this zone for Kozama Uka. And it's right here on this lip northeast of Marsh League. Gaka, uh, which is actually closest to many fires. If you go to that teleport and go down, you will find it in amongst some bushes here and next to a purple tree overlooking the lake. And once again, we can do a lookout emote to uh, talk about the beautiful landscape. Not that you would know because the time I've chosen to record is not only dark, but cloudy. Okay, here we are in Yaktel. The first one is actually at Iksbrak, which is over here on the northwestern side of the map. And you will actually find the location a little bit away from the Etherite itself. To the southwest, you'll find all of these buildings here, including this one, which is basically like a set of inn rooms, I think. And at the, you know, the first floor, we have ourselves a balcony where we can utilize the lookout command to have a look at this town. So that's the first of these zone. For sizing log entry number 19, we're over here at Ik Rax Soloi. I don't know how else you pronounce that, which is the far northeastern section of a map, which is a giant lake. And if you're wondering where could it possibly be, it is of course underwater. This is one of the uh, only underwater sizing logs actually in the expansion, is not that many uh, underwater reasons to go down here but if you go down here you'll find some lilies next to some rock right at this very location and it's another lookout to emote talking about the underwater lilies basically entry number 20 then is just south of the actual lake up there that we went to for the previous entry it's on the Zorbrit cinder field and you will find in this section here the sightseeing log overlooking two of these ballistae, or I don't know, are they ballista? I think so, overlooking the battlefield itself, uh, once again, at the top sort of northwestern section of the cinder field itself. And it's another lookout emote right next to those ballista or catapults or something. Okay, for entry number 21, this is in the middle of the southern section of the zone here at a place called Cholisolvas. I think that's how you pronounce that. This is basically a, a giant uh, rock area with a tree on top of it. You can only get here, obviously, by use of flying mount. And if you go up here, the night changes to day, so to speak. It's got a completely different biome, and you'll find it right on the tippy top edge here uh, on the corner overlooking the rest of the sunken jungle in comparison to the uh, cinder fields over there and it's another lookout emote it is a very interesting place and uh, a really really cool place to hang out actually i really do like this area be good for picnics or skydiving or both for entry number 22 we're over here to the south of that big tree at senate jajunia and uh, there's a section here with a couple of branches either side of that stretching across and you will find that is this uh, meteorite over here uh, next of which is the lookout point overlooking that beautiful bioluminescent forest which is absolutely gorgeous i hope they add more things from here to housing in the future this reminds me of macalania woods in a big big way and lastly, for this zone, for entry number 23, we have the Tree of Living Light, which is a little bit south of that massive tree on that uh, big rock that we looked at earlier in the middle of this sort of waterlogged section. You'll find the sightseeing log on a branch on the shore overlooking the Tree of Living Light, which is pretty cool. Again, this reminds me of the scene from Final Fantasy X, especially with the pyreflies or whatever. For this one, we have another look out emote. All right, here we are in Shaloni, and for entry number 24, we're over here at the first town you come to, which is Husatawi. I think that's how you pronounce that, which is the southeastern section, this little town here. I love this saloon. I think it's fantastic. And on the second floor, which you can get to on foot, by the way, there's also a walkway up the stairs uh, on the second floor or first floor I suppose on the balcony outside you will find the lookout position and uh, yeah I really really like this place I think it's fantastic we need more saloons 
For entry number 25, we have a visit over here to Mei Watson, uh, which is the second etherite in the far northeastern section of the map of Shaloni. And just a little bit to the south, you'll find one of these dots here. There's these two encampments. And then just behind here, next to a tree, is our next lookout point. Just like that, talking about the forests and the trees. And yeah, it's actually a, such a great bit of storyline with the tribal stuff here. I, I really enjoyed it. For entry 26, which is actually for Lake Toari, we're going for our second underwater section. This time underneath the lake itself. If you want to teleport over to Meiwet Soan and then come down, and uh, obviously southeast, you'll find in this area, as you can see here, there'll be a dive area underneath the lake. And if you go down exactly where I am, You'll find on top of this red looking rock with fishies all around of it and these underwater branches you'll find a lookout point which you just swim into and then do a lookout emote and you'll get that one this is a absolutely fascinating area i completely overlooked this on my first playthrough i didn't even know there was this like sort of skeletal rib cage of of roots underneath the uh, the lake really really cool actually so much of this game i have still yet to see but i thought i'd saw everything for entry number 27 of Shaloni, then, we have ourselves Pia Hehua Pia. I'm sorry, I don't know how else to pronounce that. It's on the southwestern side of the entire zone. You can teleport over to, obviously, uh, Husatawi and come all the way west. And you will find, next to these very familiar-looking things that I call the yee hahas um, which is totally not what they're called. You'll find a sightseeing log overlooking basically the big bridge to uh, Tulialal, which is pretty cool. And of course, that is an entry. You might have found this during one of your dung-related quests in this zone. Yes, they, they do love their dung quests for some reason. For entry number 28 and our last entry in Shaloni, unfortunately, I love this zone. It's over here in the northwestern section of the map at Mount uh, Lozensaya, Sasaya, Lozensaya, again, at the very tippy top of this mesa. We've got ourselves a vantage point over those lush green and iron rich uh, rocks in the distance there. And that is entry number 28. Okay, for the next entries then, we are over in Solution 9, the second city in the game. And we're going to go over to Resolution, which is this northern section. You can teleport here when you have access to that mini etherite. And you'll also find in the sort of left section, uh, which is what your western, bottom left western section of this huge waiting room, you'll find yourself your sightseeing log this place reminds me so heavily of like an aircraft uh sort of like airport waiting lounge or something i think i've spent far too much time in these places in the past so let's move on for entry number 30 we're over here at the residential sector teleport and in actual fact it's right near this uh just behind the ethernet shard itself uh if we go over here there's this sort of wet area as well as neon lit park and it's just here, and it's another lookout emote overlooking the massive skyscraper residential buildings that hopefully one day we could have player housing in. Because some of the set pieces already in there when you visit are just amazing. Right, moving on. For entry number 31, just up from the residential sector teleport, you'll find a place called Mosaic. If you go on the left side or western side of this, you'll find a bunch of seating as well as a bar and the downhearted youth if you've not done that quest like i haven't and then the sightseeing log is here it's a lookout emote overlooking this bar section essentially which is pretty cool for number 31. okay for entry number 32 for true view which is one of my favorite places they've ever added to the game from the ethernet shard itself when you teleport here if you go north up this staircase and then just bang a right you will find the sightseeing log, which is designed to overlook the entirety of this skyscraper section, as well as the Arcadion itself, which, again, looks amazing. This this place is just crazy, and uh, what a great vista to enter into our, uh, into our sightseeing log. And finally, we have entry number 33 for Solution 9, which is the Nexus Arcade. This is where you go and purchase 
all of your tombstone weapons and exchange your raid stuff if you do that. If we go in here and we go just behind here, you'll see the spinning car. If we go near the spinning car, you will actually see the sightseeing log near some billboards. And uh, yeah, it's it's I, I really want that car, dude. I don't know how we'll get that one day, but I'd love that. But essentially, it's the sightseeing log of this entire shopping mall, which has all of this verticality that we don't get to use yet. Hopefully we do in the future. All right, let's move on to Heritage Found. OK, in Heritage Found, then entry number 34 is actually over here in the Thunder Yards near the electric pot, uh, potential. Then he called that electric ponytail, and that's com completely not right. If you teleport to Yasalani and then go north, you'll find this in the northeastern section on a ridge here, uh, which you can fly to, full of Kotobal Pass uh, monsters all around. And this is another lookout emote. Entry number 34 done, overlooking all of those thunder thingies, lightning conductors. Okay, for entry number 35, we head over to the outskirts, which is the place just outside of Solution 9 in the far northern section of Heritage Found. And we're going to be going over to the far sort of eastern tip of these buildings uh, to actually find the next entry. So this is entry number 35. And to get to this one, we have to fly all the way to the top of this building. Um, where you'll remember there was a storyline sequence with a certain character that we won't mention. And then there's the lookout, essentially looking over the entirety of this electrope driven town. Very cool. Whilst we're here in the outskirts, the next one, uh, which is actually entry number 36 for the Everkeep, is just a little bit north here, right next to the entry for Solution 9. Uh, there's the bridge, in fact, for Solution 9. You'll find down here in this area next to the water that there's actually a Everkeep entry as well. Overlooking this, I don't know, what would you call this? A dam? I'm not sure what that would be. Talking about the giant Everkeep. There you go, entry number 36. For entry 37, this is talking about the Crackling Chasm. If you want to get to this, you go over to the uh, portal here, Electrope Strike, uh, which is obviously in the middle of the zone, and then go a little bit southeasterly around the corner of this. You'll feel, see the uh, massive hole in the ground, and then overlooking that on a lip right here, you will see your entry, which talks about this entire refining process essentially of electrope and all the rest of it very interesting very interesting stuff okay next up then we of course have got the name slates which is a section to the south of the zone uh you'll obviously need to teleport over to electrope strike or fly over from yasalani to get here and you'll be looking for the grave site essentially this mass grave area overlooking the actual entire zone we've got some eyeclopses over here as well in this little chapel and then we've also got the sightseeing log which is a lookout entry and uh yeah it's quite a grim place this isn't it all with all of those graves oh my goodness just a little ways away from the name slates and that graveyard then is our last entry, number 39, which is for Archeo Alexandria. You need to go over here to the submerged skyline, which is on the southwestern side of the entire zone. You'll see all of these houses and a little bit down here towards the tip of the, uh, of the zone's end here, right over here on that tip of that area, overlooking whatever that is and uh, the the tip of alexandria so there's our final entry number 39 okay entry number 40 is the meso terminal which is over here next to lanod Minamo, which is the first place you come to in this zone overlooking the dungeon in the distance and all we do here is do a lookout emote again and it's overlooking that now of course if you want to return this to its former glory you can new use new game plus but uh, I would advise doing your sightseeing log with it turned currently off as it is with a completed storyline because it's actually easier to see the sightseeing logs against the grey, even though it is slightly more depressing. Then we have entry number 41, which is actually in Canal Town, just a little bit over from the main etherite where you start. Uh, you will actually find in Canal Town, just on the tip, 
that eastern tip, you will find uh, a little pier section just from where you would come down, actually, with the, the normal transportation methods. And your lookout is right here next to those gondolas. Next up, we have entry number 42, which is actually over at the air cab station on the eastern side of those four sort of meta zones of this area and the air cab station right at the top of the spiral staircase where you would go to wait for an air cab on that tracked area will be your sightseeing log entry and with a lookout emote we have a view of yesterland which is so much nicer when the lights are on next up then we have entry number 43 which is known as the winds path gardens you'll find that next to the clara museum of nature there is actually a big sort of platform over here. You can access this by the big uh, raised up arboretum type place. And if you go over here near the wind sprites, you will actually find, as you can see here on this one, your sightseeing log entry and another slash lookout point. Okay, next up we have the Aseal Volcano. Uh, this is actually located uh, if you teleport over to Lanode Pyro and go down you'll find just past the heat wells on the southwestern side of this mini zone you'll find a bunch of fire sprites and nearby to the fire sprites overlooking what normally would be a volcano and you know pools of lava but isn't anymore will be the lookout point overlooking everything else but uh yeah very cool and then finally, for our last entry, we have to go inside this volcano area right to the top right of the screen. The closest teleport is Lanode Pyro. And if we go through here, you'll find this middle circle section. This is the speaker, steps of the speaker, and uh, you'll find it on this ramp here. You can't actually miss this one if you've done the MSQ. It would have probably been given to you straight away because you have to walk past it to finish the zone. And then we've got ourselves Happy Trails, which is our achievement for doing this. And the achievement itself, as you can see, just says uh, completing entries 1 to 45 in your Dawn Trail sightseeing log, giving us 10 achievement points. And that's pretty much your reward from all of this, as well as the trip and uh, the ability to read any of these sightseeing log entries from Dawn Trail at your leisure as well. I suppose now all we have to do is wait for this guy to be updated, the Joyous Painter, so that we can actually use some of those vistas. Well, I don't know when they'll do that, but they've done it for all of the other expansions, so it's only a matter of time before this vendor gets purchasable painting. So I suppose that's the other reward. In the future, we'll be able to hang up some amazing pictures of Solution 9, which is what I'm looking forward to the most. Uh, if you didn't know about this as well, just for future reference, if you go to the hard place in Idleshire, uh, which is actually where the custom delivery clients for Zloe is uh, specifically. There's a guy over here, and if you've done all of the sightseeing log entries for a specific zone, for example, they will uh, allow you to get these paintings, which you can put in frames and then put them in your housing, which is really kind of amazing, isn't it? Let's be honest. You can preview them as well to see what you're getting. Now you can even buy them from other people if you don't want to do the sightseeing log yourself by going on the painting section of the housing section of your market board and you'll find all of these anyway thank you so much for watching much love enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you all next time for more videos Bye bye